Hello guys, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Welcome to the Jazz Guitar Vlog. I love doing those in the morning. You still hear it's my morning voice. I'm fresh off on my first coffee. You still see my, my hair is not even dry from the shower. And I just had this thought. I was discussing with a student yesterday about uh, practicing and memorizing uh, parts of it. So the, this vlog, thanks for watching, by the way, and thanks, subscribe and, uh, you know, follow and share our videos. I have tons of great tips coming up. And this relates to looking at a piece of music or a progression or a solo or a lick that you're trying to learn and trying to do it all at once. And then saying, you know, I must master this slowly before I pick it up, which I believe couldn't be f farther from the truth. The truth, it, the whole idea is to master segments of it and then slap them back together in the end. So I'll give you an example and we'll do a, a little thought experiment because this is it's all about neurons, c cognition, right? So let's take giant steps. Um, I know the progression to giant steps. I've been playing it for 20 years, right? And uh, I'm gonna just comp on it without even preparing. So, you know, never mind the mistakes and whatever. So it's in, it's in the key of B major. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a like Pat Metini version or a swing version. I don't even know. I'll just play through the progression once. You're ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. So it's a 16 bar progression and the chords happen in a strange way. It's a Coltrane matrix, right? You need to study that. But then I looked at this, even with my student, I went, how can I play this from memory and not even think too much about what next chord is coming? And my student was attempting to learn a, actually a, a, a comping study. Let me just grab a page. Actually. So it was an all written chord study. It's all in tabs and the rhythms are all written. And this is on a standard progression. And like, no, you, you can't look at the entire page, expect to do the entire page slowly and then wrap up the tempo, wrap up the, what you need to do is look at four bars or look at two bars and then shed your bars. So on, on giant steps, like what's the first bar? Well, it's a B major to a D7, then it lands on a G. Can you do this like 20,000 times? You need to do this a lot until your brain's like, okay, I accept this order. And then what you do is you, actually put this on hold. You're like, yeah, I got it. All right, so I got a B major, D97, G major seven. Then you tell your brain, put that on hold. What's coming after? G major, B flat 13, E flat. So you see, we've already seen the key of B, the key of G, and the key of E flat with their uh, associated five chords. So if you're not familiar with this, don't worry. Um, but <laughs> here's the point. You, um, you won't be able to memorize big segments. That's just how the brains work. And I most hesitated to pick up the guitar for this vlog because I want to do a thought experiment. Are you able to memorize 20 digits? And what I'll do, I'll flash it on the screen here and I'll just spell it out. And, <clears throat> and then you can pause and just count 30 seconds and do make an honest effort to memorize the number. You ready? Here's a number. 8196637200514486 One more time 8196637200514486870 All right I'm not superhuman those are two phone numbers I'm very familiar with the one is the one when I was a kid um, at my parents' place, so I'm familiar with it. And the second one, the second 10, so area code and then seven numbers, is my first phone number when I moved to Montreal. So the only way that you'd be able to memorize this is if we walk through it, I could get you to memorize. I, we won't do it right now, but um, well, maybe we, we would, but I'll give you a pointer to the blog. Maybe I'll put a link here or here, whatever. Um, there's a blog post I wrote about five years ago called the Scotch Tape Method, and it says exactly that. It says, learn, so look at your piece, divide and conquer, A, B, C, rehearse A, 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 A a lot, put A on hold, then look at B, 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 then put A and B together. Then once A, B is solid, put it on hold, attack C, and do the same thing. C, 
tape C on D, right? And then, oh, sorry, notifications. And, and then uh, actually that's the beauty of being live and not even editing vlogs. Let me stop this. Okay, you shut up. And then after you get everything, you slap it together, but it's still <laughs> very discreet pieces. And it reminds me of uh, martial artists, people that work a lot on jujitsu and whatever. It's like you as a regular human being, like two seconds, you're on the floor, like boom, what happened? And like, do it again. And then boom, you're on the floor again. You're like, what happened? But for the, the master of jujitsu, there's 12 distinct steps. Grab the arm, do this, do that, do that, do that. So the same thing happens when you're working on a piece. You, you actually see it as discrete pieces, while for someone that's not familiar with giant steps, it might uh, just look like a blur. So let's do the phone number exercise. I, I find this fun. Um, where I grew up here, get to know, is a is a suburb of Ottawa and the local area number is 819. Really hard to forget. It's 819 everywhere. There's no other area code until they started to have cell phone towers, whatever. So 819 is the first th three digits and 663 is the, you know, the, the first three digits of a phone number. You remember way back when you didn't have to dial in the area code yet. Uh, so 663, all my friends had 663 or 643. So 663, so 819, 663, 819 area code, I'm a kid, 663, I'm at parents' place, I'm a kid, then 7200, 7200. My parents had to change phone number because a paper mill company switched to 643, 7200. So they actually grabbed the same end. So there was only one number difference. So phone would ring at like 3 a.m. would be for shipping and receiving. So it was always wrong numbers. So my parents were forced to switch numbers and now they have a different number, which I'll keep private. Uh, so 819-663-7200, all my friends in grade school were like, 7200, what's that? It's like, well, that's just a number, right? 819-663-7200, that's 10 digits. Next, if you're familiar with Montreal, 514 is the area code, there's 514, and there's 450, 450s outside the island. On the Montreal island, it's 514. Uh, 514, it's just Montreal area code. It's sort of a known thing. If you look at, uh, well, in Quebec, at least you look at your credit card, you wanna call, you call 1-800 toll free, or you call the 514 number. Then put this on hold, 514, 486 is, uh, once again, the, the acronym, 486. And then there's nothing you have to memorize. It's just, that's what it is, 486. And the uh, last four digits, 8709, which is the last four digits of my phone number right now, 870, so it's pretty easy. So 514-486-8709, 514-486-8709. You repeat this like 10 times, and then you start from the beginning. You have 819-663-7200, and then you have 514-486-8709. Then that's 20 digits, and boom, but, your brain needs that little bit of a backstory. So I'm getting back to my giant steps. That's what it is. I'm like, oh yes, how, how is this guy related to this guy and this guy and this? And then the rest of you, it, whether I go... Or if I go... I'm sorry, I even messed that up. <laughs> now I'm thinking too hard about it, I'm forgetting it. That's another thing. So I know some walking bass techniques. So the, the thought pattern of memorization is not different because I'm doing bossa versus swing. It's the same thing. I could do the same thing by just looking at chord shells. I could do the same thing while just saying I'm gonna play uh, top note and uh, extensions. Right. Um, actually, let me try that again. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, something like that. So it doesn't work really with the walking wrist with the pedaling, but that that's one way you would comp if there was a basis of piano player. So on that note, um, I just wanted to to let you know. Check out the. Uh, scotch tape method blog post think of segmenting your learning especially when it comes to memorization people 
tell me a lot. I have a bad memory, whatever. It's like, well, maybe there's some genetics to it. There's the IQ. There's things we can't do anything about. But often people have a, a hard time finding a method that is conducive to memorizing things. So seeing the meaning in the things you memorize, so a chord progression or a lick or whatever, and then making sure you talk, take small enough bites, that you really take small bites uh, for memorization. All right, on that note, I will let you go. Thanks for watching the vlog, guys. It's always a, an honor to hear your comments, to see your feedback and see people share the videos. Um, once again, I'm Mark from the JazzGuitarLessons.net. If you believe uh, you'd like to learn more about this, uh, we are relaunching the program very soon. It's called Jazz Guitar Mastery, so you can head over to mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net. Mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net. There's a free six-part video training on some of these things about the concierge method. The concierge method is my way of delivering uh, my uh, instruction through the videos, which I really highly encourage you to, to take a look at. The six-part video training is totally free, and you can just head over to mastery.jazzguitarlessons.net to start and get the videos as we release them. On that note, I will let you go, and we'll see you soon on the website on jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher with a real morning voice. Talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you.